How's it going, Jarbers? Welcome back. And if you're new here, hey, I'm Jarra Sky. Don't forget to take a look around at my channel. You might find some things that you like here. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, today we are going to be talking about minimalism and being an artist. This is a very specific teeny tiny little area of people who want to be minimalist and are also artists. Since I am an artist and I'm also a minimalist, I know what you're going through. Some of the holdups of getting rid of your art are kind of silly because you're just holding on to these, you know, piece of paper and this. And for some reason, as an artist, I know, I get it, we have attached a very emotional amount of ourselves to these, this like piece of paper, to this canvas, to whatever, whatever you are making. You have given part of yourself to that piece and you feel like if you get rid of it, it's like damaging. Well, it's not. Some of the things we need to break down in order to be able to get ready to get rid of it is why are you making your art in the first place? Are you doing so in order to, for other people to see it? If so, then some things you can do are go and hide your artwork out in the public so people can see it. In like very high traffic areas, very public places, put a little post-it on it or something and put free and give it away. And a lot of people will see it. It might end up on social media and all that sort of thing. Very very, very cool. Do YouTube videos and show off your art and how you are growing and all this stuff. You give If you start getting a following, you can do giveaways and give it away to people or auction it off for charity. If that's what, if you want people to see it, if you want to do it to make a living at it, then you do need to start letting that stuff go away, documenting it really well, you know, getting it prof professionally, well, not professionally, you can get a professional camera and archive it, scan it, whatever for your portfolio so you have it. You start taking that more seriously and getting that all done. Some of those jobs may want to see originals but you only want your best work so your newest work is probably your best work. Or are you perhaps keeping it so you can see how you've progressed because photos also can do that. You can see through photo documentation if you just make yourself a little portfolio so you can see how much you have grown. You need to break down why are you making this? Are you making it just for you? If it's just for you then you should be able to let it go and donate it to charity goodwill auction it off on eBay for charity or things things of this nature if the money is of no object to you if you are just seemingly attached to it give it to family give it to friends that way when you go to their house you get to see it you get to visit it and it's an excuse to go spend time with your friend and it becomes this great magnet so you go and you spend time with your friends instead of just spending time with your stuff in your boxes or if you're holding on to things because you think Maybe one day it's going to be worth a lot of money because I'm a famous artist and I want to keep all this stuff and then I can have it all to give out. <sighs> if you want to be this great artist, you need to be making as many things as possible. You need to be creating and getting better and delving into to your work as, as much as possible. You need to be just... And you're not going to want to keep all of that stuff around. You're going to want to let it go so you can grow and be, grow into this new artist. With every piece, you become a better artist. You grow into more of yourself because you are growing as a person as much as you are creating your work. So it's important that you can learn to let stuff go because it's like you in life. If you can't say if you can't let some bad things that happened to you in your past go, you are not able to grow as a person. It's the same thing with your art. If you can't let some of your past work go, you're not gonna grow as an artist. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Well, you still could grow as an artist, but you're not gonna be focusing so much on your past, you'll be focusing on your future. As far as supplies go, I would say, as we are artists, we like to dabble in a lot of things, and we like to have a lot of different materials to play with and everything. Just pick something to focus on. If you really, really want to get really good at it and you want to make really great work, pick one kind of media and work on that for a while. It doesn't have to be forever, but that way you don't have all these supplies. You can work on that for six months straight. You just do acrylic paintings and you just focus and focus and focus and you make all your work. It's all acrylic paintings. And then you're like, I'm bored of this. Or you're like, man, I'm so glad I stopped doing the other stuff. It was so distracting. If at six months, time you decide, hey, this really isn't working for me, I want to do sculpture now. Then you can let all the, the acrylic stuff go, give it to another young aspiring artist and help facilitate their future, and then start working with the new medium you want to work with, and then get into that and do that and obsess over it and get really good at it and learn about it and techniques and just like 
really give yourself to your art if you're going to if you want to be an artist if you want to focus on things one of the reasons i decided i was not going to have all my art supplies anymore i started getting rid of things bits and pieces like i had oil pastels which i used to really like but i wasn't really using them only like very once in a while so i was like well you know what i don't need this anymore i was like i like to do black and ink drawing and that's really cool and no, and then I got rid of that. And then I had a whole bunch of Sharpies because I like to do things with Sharpies. And I was like, no, I'm gonna get rid of that. And I was like, I just like painting. I like painting with acrylics. That's what I want to do. And then I did that. And then I kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, what do I want to do in life? Do I want to just make this art that I can't really sell? And like, I feel like I make it and nobody gets to see it. But I also don't want to spend the time on promoting myself and going out and about and putting my art everywhere and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, what am I doing? I also did a, I did this free art giveaway, 365 days of art one year in 2013 or something. If you look up jerosky.blogspot.com, you can see. And then I gave away, I just gave away pieces and I gave it to all over the world. And I got almost every state in the US and multiple countries. It was really cool. And after that I did that, I got really good at stuff. And I also was like, mm. it was nice to clear out and have not all this old art, it was in people's homes and it was gone but I also felt like I wanted to focus on something else creatively because what did I want to do with my life I wanted to make movies so I started focusing more on that and then as I did that I was like you know what having the paints around just isn't working for me this doesn't work so then it was really hard to let the paints go but I did and I gave it to somebody that didn't have the money for it and then they could make art so it was kind of an awesome thing. And then I got to start really pursuing my passion. And sorry, camera died. I wanted to follow my passions. And as I became more minimal and everything, I started to focus and decided how do I want to express myself creatively? And I decided through video. It's always how I wanted to do it. That's the YouTube is even an extension of that. Yeah, you just, you need to start asking yourself, why are you creating what you were creating? What is the purpose? Why can't you get rid of what you were getting rid of? Is it because you want to keep it? You want to display it? Then display it. If you want to give it as gifts, give it as gifts. If you think it will be worth money, that doesn't make any sense. Like, just keep making stuff that'll be worth more money because it's going to be a better piece of art. Is it because you don't know what the hell to do with it? Then that means it's obviously not that important. Now is it? If you have no idea what to do with it. You just need to ask yourself questions. Why are you creating this art? What is the point of it? Figure out what you are doing. Are you doing it just because you like it and you're having fun? Then you should definitely be able to let it go and keep having fun, keep having fun, keep making. And I will say if you want to do, if you pick a medium and you like it and you have tons of stuff for that medium, that's fine because you're focused. You're like, these are all the things I use when I make my art. That'll just be, that'll be the things that you keep around. You don't have to do minimalism how you see other people on YouTube do minimalism. You make your own way with it because it's more, did that video of like, what is minimalism? And it's this mindset of just being more mindful about the things that you are having in your life in every aspect, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all these sort of things. So it's not just about the stuff, it's not about having empty walls. It's not just about having empty, you know, apartment or house. It's about you maximizing your life. So just think about that. Think about what's going on. You don't need to have, you're like, well, maybe I want to do this one day. Definitely, I, that's the biggest thing I could recommend is picking a medium and just becoming freaking an expert in that. It's going to be more fulfilling long term anyways than messing around a little bit than becoming knowledgeable in a bunch of different mediums. I mean, if you, as you are an artist, you probably follow a lot of other artists on Instagram. And who are the artists that you do follow? Do you follow people that feeds are filled with tons of different stuff? Or do you follow people that have this one focus and you're like, oh, they always make this and it's so incredible and it's so amazing and I love the way it looks and I love seeing their new stuff. You, you probably follow people that have a focus. If you're serious about that, do that. <laughs> and the last thing I did want to mention since there will be artist watching this is go to the website tiltbrush.com slash air. I'll put the link below and you need to check that out because it is 3D painting with an Oculus Rift, like 3D painting a world. You can just paint 3D all around you. I just want to show you that because it is so incredible and maybe when you see that you will be like, <sighs> all this analog stuff. I want to do this digital art where I'm in the world because I saw it and I was like, oh my god. 
Please give that to me. Please. I want to try that so bad. So, so, so bad. But watch that video. Watch that video in its entirety and you're going to be so inspired. My gosh, my sketchbooks are not that important because if I get my hands on this thing, like what am I going to be able to make? Just the world of art is going to change so much again. It's going to be just incredible. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this, but if you have any other questions about this, put them down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I know. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. All right guys, I'm Jared Sky, and I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs>